But this was just my take on it. This is why I personally don't support girls supporting girls. And this is why you will never catch me saying girls supporting girls. Hey guys, it's Lori and welcome and welcome back to my channel. So, I'm here with a commentary video, my first commentary video, and it's going to be on why I don't support the girls supporting girls movement. So, I just like to preface this all by saying that I don't aimlessly hate all girls and women. It's not like I just have this pent-up hatred for them. It's just that the movement itself, I think, is pointless. I feel like the most obvious problem with it is that someone's likability isn't determined by their gender. You can be a girl and also be a terrible person. You can be a man and also be a terrible person. It doesn't really matter your gender because who you are isn't determined by your gender. Forcing other people to like you because of your gender is just, it's weak and it's wild in my opinion. The most adjacent saying I can find to this girl supporting girl saying is the respect your elders saying. I've heard a lot of people on the internet be like, I shouldn't have to respect my elder if my elder is not respecting me. So why isn't that the same policy applied to girls supporting girls? It just doesn't make any sense. Another issue with the girl supporting girls movement is that the definition has completely been eroded. I could not find one solid definition from like the modern popular girl supporting girls advocates. I could not find one consistent definition among all of them. It was always something different, something that you would interpret for yourself. So I'm going to read off the official definition from the girlsupportinggirls.org website and I want you to compare that to the definition that you had in your head of what Girl Supporting Girls means. Okay, so Girl Supporting Girls was started in 2013 by three Chicago women hoping to improve the prospects of at-risk girls in developing countries and inspire our own children to be agents of change. Girl Supporting Girls believes that educated girls can change the world. Now, I did not know this, but in my opinion, you can't have a successful movement if nobody is working towards a common goal. If everyone is interpreting Girl Supporting Girls in their own way, then what does it really mean? There's no real meaning. So another thing about Girls Supporting Girls that I've noticed that I don't like is that they pick and choose which girls they want to support. I noticed that if you're an overweight girl, if you're not a conventionally attractive girl, maybe if you're not as rich as some people, you will not get the same benefits of the Girls Supporting Girls movement as someone else. Because when they see somebody that they don't like or somebody that doesn't fit their mold, they will bash them to no end and there will not be one person going in and saving them and trying to say oh girl supporting girls there's none of that like they want you to be a certain kind of person in order for you to reap the benefits of girl supporting girls which is unfair because at the end of the day your circumstances does not take away from your gender like you're still a girl at the end of the day the biggest example that i can think of this is on tiktok there's a tiktoker named Alex and she is called Papa, she's called a he, she's masculinized, she's dragged to just the ends of the earth. People don't care to help her and it's honestly outrageous bullying but I've never one time in her comment section see girls pretty girls when it comes to Sienna May. It's a different story. So if you don't know who she is, um, she's a body positivity influencer She's a mid-sized girl with a socially acceptable body, but she has still managed to become the body positivity icon. She's the girl that people think of when they think of a body positive girl. It's not bad for you to, you know, have your idols and your icons, but she has a socially acceptable body and the body positivity movement was started for marginalized bodies, which she does not have. But when people voice that they don't like how she's the face of the movement, they are called a hater. They are said, people say to them, girls supporting girls, what happened to girls supporting girls? But they're voicing genuine concerns. This is a real problem. So why is it that they're being shunned and they're just told to save it? People just use the saying to dodge criticism and to avoid being canceled, which is weak. And it's stagnant because how do you expect to get anywhere if you keep on sugarcoating everything and you keep on trying to protect everybody like not everything is like a personal attack 
But then when you make it like an attack and you say, well, you're attacking me, we're supposed to be girls here. What happened to us is supporting each other. Like, hello? This movement minimizes important issues and it allows people to bask in ignorance and privilege, which is also harmful and stagnant. And I'm not sure if this is a stretch, but I'm going to go as far as to say that it also contributes to people's anxiety. Because when you're on the internet and you're constantly seeing people censoring themselves in an attempt to not get counseled, in an attempt to not get slaughtered and slandered, you then internalize that and then you think, well, I can't say what I really think because what if people judge me? What if they drag me? And then it becomes a thing where like you're constantly in fear of saying the wrong thing because you don't want to get attacked. It's like you have to have the popular opinion in order to be accepted. This is my biggest pet peeve about the girls supporting girls thing. It's what I've noticed is that the same people that say girls supporting girls to no end are the same girls who make the pick me content. Because you can't even do regular things without being seen as spiteful. It's like if you pull up your leggings in a certain way, you're being a pick me. If you complain about your height, you're being a pick me. If you say that you have guy friends, you're being a pick me. It's like everything is pick me. And it's like it's girls making this content and it's girls dictating what's pick me and what is not. And then it's also girls saying, but girls are girls. But it's girls dragging other girls. Like, how does that work? I saw this quote from Femme Magazine that I feel like fits the theme of what I'm saying so well. It says, instead, in Girls Pretty Girls, is used as a weapon. The idea that if you, a woman, do not agree with other women, you are the problem. You are being a bad feminist, which is so true. It's like today, everyone has to have the same opinion. People can think differently and not be a bad person. So now I want to get into counterclaims. I'm going to get into the... People who are really strong advocates of girl supporting girls, what they tend to say. So the first most common one that I see, women are always being hated on and bashed for what they do. So why can't we come together and just support everyone? And I think that's true. I feel like girls do get attacked for the smallest things, whether it's the clothes that they wear, how they do their makeup, if they wear makeup, it's everything. Everything I feel like girls tend to get a lot of hate for. But the problem with that is those are usually isolated incidents and I feel like those isolated incidents should be tackled individually instead of making an entire tyrant movement and then completely shutting down everyone's voice. And I feel like the people who advocate for girls putting girls see it as harmless but it's literally the exact opposite. It's like a cult in my opinion. This might be dramatic, but I see it like this. You have a whole mob of girls jumping on you and being like, oh my God, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong, girl supporting girls, how dare you say that about her? And I should be able to say, I don't like this girl without someone saying, you're a bad person. So another thing that I see a lot from people that are really strong supporters of girl supporting girls is the comment, but men can work in unity, so why can't women? But here's the problem with that. Modern and popular girls putting girls like the type that you might see in people's comment sections that version of girls putting girls doesn't offer any tools for women to reach the Levels of men. They don't offer any job opportunities. They don't offer any scholarships. They offer nothing naturally I mean no change is gonna be made. Here's a quote from the urge.org and the author of the urge.org said these movements have no substance behind them and they don't invite any real change which is honestly so true. Like, I've never seen any any type of progressive action taken from the Girls Pretty Girls movement. It's always just been hateful and bad takes from other women trying to silence somebody else, which I feel like is so obnoxious. Like, please, let's, let's let this go. The modern Girls Pretty Girls, I mean, it doesn't offer, it doesn't teach people about sexism, it doesn't teach them about the patriarchy, it doesn't try to dismantle either sexism or the patriarchy, it's just like people just talking and giving bad opinions, which I just feel like will never get you anywhere. So naturally you're never going to be at the level of a man if you're not doing anything to get to that place. That's opposing view that I'm going to present is from Forbes, a Forbes article, and they essentially said that there is strength in numbers or 
quote, there is power in the pack. And here is where intersectionality comes in because packs always have leaders and historically the leader is always a white woman. These women are the least representative of the entire group and they're the least marginalized of the entire group. They cannot relate to the people that they're re representing no matter how hard they try. It doesn't matter how liberal you are. Until you've lived in that person's position, you will never know how it's like. So the fact that the leaders of these movements are usually white women, very counterproductive. So I'm going to use a modern example, a more recent example, and it's from the movie Moxie on Netflix, and the leader of the whole feminist revolution was a self-centered white girl who lacked the traits, experience, and the self and social awareness to be a leader, and when she got her POC friends in trouble, she made it about herself. Instead of being there for Claudia, or reporting Lucy's harasser to a teacher, Vivian centers her experience and is concerned with only protecting herself, end quote. Girls Supporting Girls isn't mindful of diversified experiences. Like I said, it expects people to fit into a certain mold, but when you have a whole bunch of people from a whole bunch of backgrounds, there is no one mold that they can fit. They might share things in common, but there's no one mold that they can fit. So it really makes no sense for you to force them to think the same. Here's a quote that I found from urge.com, which I agree with a lot. It says, white women speak over black, indigenous, women of color voices and concerns in order to continue waddling in their own ignorance and upkeep their privilege. And it became clear to me that this girl supporting girls movement was just another tactic for white women to be absolved of accountability and further silence black women and other women of color. Wow. Um, I agree with this because the majority of the people that I see pushing this girls putting girls narrative so hard it's usually the white woman it's always the white woman when it comes to the feminist thing it's always them that's like girl power girl boss some people have the privilege of only being marginalized because of their gender but other people are marginalized because of their disability their sexuality their race things like that and it's just not fair to have someone who's the most privileged out of the bunch to represent such a diverse group of people. Girls supporting girls should uplift marginalized voices, not speak in their place. But that's not the case when it comes to this movement. It's always think like this or get left. It's one or two. There's no gray area and that's really toxic and harmful. So essentially, I don't support girls supporting girls because it's a harmful and stagnant movement with no real purpose. I know people are going to have their own thoughts about this, so if you want to, I mean, comment it. Comment your opinion in the comments. But this was just my take on it. This is why I personally don't support girls supporting girls, and this is why you will never catch me saying girls supporting girls. If you like this video, make sure you like, comment, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye!